All right. Welcome to our three-day GHK workshop. We're glad to be in Finland. First time for some of us. Yossi's know, been here for a little while. <coughs> so you may or may not be acquainted with the Broad Institute. It grew out of the Human Genome Project in the 1990s uh, and then became its own full-fledged nonprofit research institute. We're affiliated with Harvard and MIT, so we have graduate students from those institutions working with us. Um, our leader is Eric Lander, uh, who runs his own research lab and is also involved in a lot of science policy. He was a uh, science advisor to President Obama, among other things. Uh, and a lot of our funding comes from the philanthropists Ida, Eli and Edith Broad, um, who were uh, just big contributors to science, and they have an art museum on the West Coast, too. Uh, and the goal of the Broad is to be able to use genomics to transform the study of medicine. Uh, we do this through a wide variety of things. There are a lot of computational scientists at the Broad. There are a lot of wet lab scientists. There are people doing disease models in animals. There are people doing infectious disease research in bacteria. And so we, we look at a wide variety of different subjects in order to better understand human disease. And our goal is to share openly. So that applies to our software, like the GATK, that applies to our ideas, uh, that applies to our papers, our manuscripts. We do a lot of preprints, and we want to make our data as widely available as possible because science shouldn't be done in isolation. <clears throat> so Yossi and Sohi and I come to you from the group known as Bro Genomics. Uh, Yossi and I and Lee Lichtenstein lead the methods development uh, within that group, and so he comes to us from the communications team. Uh, within Bro Genomics, we have our genomics platform, which is the group that's responsible for the actual, uh, the, the actual production of the sequencing data going from a biological sample in a test tube all the way to your FASTQ or unmapped BAM files. And then the data sciences platform takes over at the point that you have your file, and we run all the algorithms and develop those so that you can get your variants at the end. <clears throat> So this is a graph which is admittedly very hard to read, but the goal is just to show you how much data we have at the Broad and how much more data we're producing each year. <clears throat> You'll see a huge increase in these pink bars from when we bought a 10-pack of Illumina's X10 sequencers, which are whole genome sequencers. So we, we make a lot of data at the Broad. And because of that, we need to design algorithms that are robust and production quality that can handle this much data because we serve the Broad's needs first, and in order to be able to get the results from this data to the researchers that we work with, we need good algorithms. <clears throat> and so, as I said, we take over after the data comes off the sequencer. Um, we'll talk more about file formats in a little bit, but the GHK tools are going to work with um, FASTQ and unmapped BAM files, aligned SAM or BAM files, and then finally the uh, variants that you'll see in your raw VCF. <clears throat> And we're very excited to introduce the new GATK4 edition, which is in beta right now. Uh, and the most exciting thing is that it's now been made public and open source so that we can accept contributions from other people. All of our code is open for use. We're not licensing it for money anymore. Um, and that's, again, just trying to motivate this goal of being able to share openly and promote more science. And so there have been some really big changes in GATK4 in terms of the engine. It's a brand new framework, and we've uh, increased the speed, scalability, and versatility. Again, because the Broad has so much data, we're having to work with a lot of it in the cloud um, because we don't store it on our own network file systems anymore. There's just too much. So we have a lot of support in GATK4 with working for files in the Google Cloud, for example, uh, and also using Spark technology which is a much, much faster way to work with large amounts of read data, for example. We'll talk about some of those tools later. And our engine team did a lot of performance optimizations for the best practices tools that get used a lot, like BQSR, Haplotype Caller, and MeTech2. Um, we'll talk about the responsibilities of those tools in a couple lectures. Um, and we've also expanded our tool set to include a lot more types of variants. So we're uh, introducing a lot more somatic tools for cancer variant calling. Uh, we're introducing copy number tools, and there are structural variation calling tools in the works, too. And as part of GATK4, we brought in Picard tools, which EOC and the team he previously worked on uh, developed for a long time. Um, so there are a lot of metrics collections things on BAM's files um, and a lot of extra support for um, data quality through those tools. <clears throat> so some of the highlights from the, the new GATK4 engine are um, some increased speed that we get from contributions from our industry partners at Intel. 
Um, the Spark support that I've mentioned for tools like the copy number tools uh, that we won't look at in the hands-on, but uh, know that they're out there. Um, and then the cloud support <coughs> and an easier way to traverse different types of data. Um, and if you are ever in a position to write your own walker uh, on top of the GHK framework, you'll find that these new traversal styles are very helpful. So we've published best practices workflows for even more types of variants now. Uh, the germline small variants, SNPs and indels, used to be our sort of flagship product. But recently, we've added our best practices for somatic SNPs and indels, which you'll get a chance to work with in the hands-on sessions. Uh, we have somatic copy number variation, which is also part of the hands-on. And we're introducing an early prototype of germline copy number variation. Our structural variation tools are still in, de in development, and soon online you should be seeing best practices for the new PathSeq pipeline, which is pathogen detection, like finding bacterial reads from human sequencing data. As part of our big rewrite of the GATK, in parallel there was also <clears throat> a rewrite of the pipelining language. So you may be familiar with GATK 3s Q tool for pipelining commands together. Um, but another of the engineering teams at the Broad has been working very hard on the workflow description language, which so he'll get into a little bit later, um, which is basically a, an easier way for you to chain tools together that has a lot of benefits beyond just putting all the commands together in a bash script. And again, because we like to make everything public and share with the world, you'll find a lot of our resources online through the GHK forum <laughs> and through the GHK website some of our best practices, tool documentation, blog, and of course the forum where wonderful people like Sohi and Sheila answer your questions. Um, you can also download pre-compiled versions of the GATK. Um, here we have a link to the latest version of three, but the GATK four beta should be up there also. So the itinerary for today, um, this first day here we're gonna have all lectures. Uh, in the morning we're gonna talk about pre-processing which is how to get from the reads that come off the sequencer to your first aligned BAM. In the afternoon, we'll talk about germline variant discovery and also somatic uh, SNP and indel calling. Uh, our first day of the tutorials, in the morning we're gonna do basics of uh, data sequence analysis and then calling germline SNPs and indels. And in the afternoon, we'll do uh, hard filtering based on features of those germline variants. And then day three is gonna be devoted to somatic data, both um, small nucleotide variants and indels, and also copy number variation.